I found myself down a YouTube rabbit hole of Ooh. you okay yeah I'm, you good? I'm just trying to, oh. to have a conversation with you okay <laughs> by not looking at you because I think that it will be best for the audio okay I'll try to do it the same same plus eye contact makes me kind of itchy yeah and also hard <laughs> I don't get it <laughs> um, <laughs> tell me more yeah. <laughs> so I found this YouTube channel where this guy uh, puts his information out there so scammers call him and he live streams him dealing with these scammers they 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 call him and they um, say they're from Microsoft and he's got a problem on his computer and um, then they lock him out of the computer and uh, they've got to pay him like a thousand dollars in order to unlock his computer and he he totally scams them it is the funniest thing like um, like it's actually not that funny, but the way that YouTube is set up where you just watch one after another after another after another to find like elements of those other things, it's set up so that you can binge watch a person's content and they know enough about the content that uh, this person watched this video, so they are most likely to watch this other video because 300 other people in the last hour have also gone on to this video afterwards. Mm -hmm. So. But it, it it is it was so engaging because I was following along as if this was a like a a murder mystery like a like a Dateline episode. The guy will like he and 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 he he changes his voice so he sounds like a grandma. Oh man! And like on his stream, he's wearing like a a gray wig and and glasses, and he's talking like this. Oh, Sonny, I. I don't know how to log into my Gmail. My 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 son does that for me, so I can call my son if you want. It is not a good story, but it was so freaking hilarious watching these people get angrier and angrier and angrier. And and his whole premise is that he's going to keep someone online for three four hours to prevent them from using that time to scam real old people. Mm. And then he does the reveal at the end, and he changes. He drops the act, and he says, "Hey, does this teach you a lesson? Do you feel good about yourself? You need to stop scamming people. You just wasted four hours of your time. You need to. to you need to get along." He he can talk to these people for four hours. Yeah, sometimes more. Oh my! He keeps gosh. them online because they're so driven by like, oh, we've got a live one here. We've got someone who's gullible, someone who is seemingly elderly, and then. It's a, you know, it's a, it, they're, they're seeing dollar signs. And so they're going to chase it and chase it and chase it. And then come to find out he deletes files off of their computer because they connect computers so that they can hack into him. But what they don't know is he's deleting all of the stuff out of their personal folders and stuff. It is highly entertaining. How does he get his n number? So they don't call on the phone, huh? They... Yeah, it's it's a phone number that's that he, you know, when people call into a radio show, they can patch people in. Mm -hmm. So he's he's simply, um, he's got a, and it must be like a, maybe a Google Voice number or something like that that he sure. puts out there. And then people call it and he patches them into his live stream so that the audience can hear. How do they get his number though? Does he just put he it? He puts on? it out there and, and maybe puts it on like, like forums or or he will become aware of the phone number of like don't call this number it's a scam so he'll call it to start the um the process to get into okay. their targets yeah yeah it's it makes me want to um to do something like that it's like it's it's entertainment but it's sort of justice in a way right I think the only thing that would be holding you back, I think it checks all the boxes. I don't think you have time to talk to uh, a telemarketer. Oh, yeah. Or not a telemarketer. These are scammers. Right. Scammers for four hours at a time. True. You might need to waste their time and humiliate them in like 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> that might not be as, well, maybe, maybe, uh, you know, concise is good. I encourage you to do this, but we'll understand if you don't. Yeah, I... I... I'll put it in the pile of don'ts. Yeah. But I don't have time. Well. Maybe you could have someone else do the hacking while you talk to them. I'll just 
Yeah, they can transcribe what I say. It could be a team of things. Yeah. Of of people, not things. I mean, I don't have the time, you're right, but I did have the time to watch eight hours worth of these damn videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> folks welcome to make me like this i'm brandon i'm here with my pal jeff and this is a this is a format for us to help each other broaden our horizons and like things that we wouldn't normally like now today i want to talk to jeff about something that i want him to make me like oh okay so jeff i um i've known you for what five or six years something like that yeah and for the entirety of that five and six years, up until about a week or two ago, I didn't find something out about you that I probably should have known from the get-go. I think from the moment you first started working with me, this should have been what you lead with. And so... (laughs) I can't even remember what I revealed to you a week ago. Yeah. So... Should I remember it? Yes. Okay. Yes. It shows how Couple, thoughtless uh, I am. <laughs> You're just throwing out I just uh, throw things jargon. out. Yep. 15 years ago. Oh, okay. 15 years ago. That was like a month or two ago. Okay. No, no, okay, no. no. This is November. This is okay. November. Okay. All right. In 2004, there was an incident at the Palace of Auburn Hills where the Pistons were playing the Indiana Pacers and it devolved into a major brawl all over the news, not just not just Sports Center, but regular news where f- players going up into the stands, fighting audience members. Um, it was just it was a huge debacle, and I didn't find out until a couple of weeks ago that you were actually there, yep, in person, yep, at this like once in a lifetime event. What you know this 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 very um, historic, not for good reasons, but a, a very memorable event in the um you know in sports history and how could you not have ever told me about that i don't know how it never came up in five years yeah i i I guess if the pistons were good and we were talking about it very frequently then you know maybe it would have come up organically or something i mean you're (laughs) if if someone even mentions the word superman i'm on it with my story about hey man i was in superman like so, uh, so you know, kudos to you for for kind of keeping your keeping your cool there. But there's a difference in that, though. I mean, if <laughs> if I was Ron Artest, yeah, <laughs> or <laughs> if I was a bench player for the Pistons, yeah, or or, or something like that, um, I yeah. But sure. your point's well taken. Okay, yeah. So background, quick background for for anyone who maybe doesn't know about this in 2004. The Pistons won the championship, the, wor- the world championship, um, and that's in June. A couple months later, the next season starts, so November of 2004. Um, they're coming off of this championship, and Ben Wallace gets fouled by Ron Artest. And it's the end of the game. The game is pretty much out of hand. It was a, a pretty hard foul. Ben Wallace doesn't like that and shoves him back. Refs get involved, and then Ron Artest, in the act of being separated, goes and lays on the scorer's table. Some fan threw a cup of beer at him, prompting Ron Artest to run up into the stands and start beating the hell out of whoever he thought threw that. Mm -hmm. And then chaos ensued. So how close to that were you? Um... We were in the nosebleeds. You were uh, up in the in nosebleeds. The second bowl. So we started with like probably like third or fourth row from from the back of the the arena. Okay. And we ended up as close as we could get, which was like down on the balcony of the upper of the upper deck. Deck. Just which like, all of this activity was in the lower bowl, right. right? So we were pretty, and maybe that's a reason why I don't lead with that story. Is be like it's you were like there, was, but you weren't involved. It's not like I was in the midst of it. Yeah. Right. Um, so so this happens, and you run down from the top, 
as far down as you can get to get a better view or just kind of like what's going what's going through your mind at this point i guess uh something to keep in mind is i'm a hockey fan yeah sure so fights to me um they just kind of, I have kind of a neutral reaction to them. Sure, I, fights between players, but fights if a hockey players. Mm-hmm. player went up into the stands and started beating Let a me fan. try to get back in, in the mindset of, okay. of this day. So you're how old? Um, I'm in college, uh, a sophomore in college. So I am not of drinking age. What am I, 20? Maybe. maybe, okay. 19, 20. Well, how old are you now? And then subtract 15 from that. Oh. And then uh, that would give you an exact I'm um, 34. Age. Okay. So you'd be 19. 19. 19, yeah. Yeah. Wow, fast math. <laughs> I I will say that I, I said 19. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you for the math All exercise. Right. Okay. So what's the question again? My my uh, mindset when this is Your going mindset, on? yeah. I think I had a holy shit. Like, this is, this is different. Um, you... When you're at one of those things like that, or at least eh, I got to stop generalizing. I was there, right? I had no commentators to uh, set the scene for me and kind of, I think something about sports commentators is I think good sports commentators are able to uh, kind of elaborate and contextualize things. Um, Bad commentators tend to, uh, take you to uh, understand what's going on the way that they're understanding it. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of bad commentators in 2019 that interject a lot of opinion and, and, and everything in there. Um, so I really appreciate one of the things I appreciate about going to games is that no one's in my ear and yeah. I can just take it in and I can interpret it the way I interpret it. But maybe with that, there's a little bit of like you're when something like this happens, when chaos ensues, I'm kind of anchored to my own reality. Um, I'm insulated. I'm not in in harm's way at all. So when it happens, there's a little bit of disbelief. Yeah. Um, I, I think me and my friend group like unanimously disliked Ron Artest before this event. And then to see him lay on the table nonchalantly um, while refs held back um, maybe the fan favorite in Detroit Pistons history and Ben Wallace. Sure. Um, uh, I, th- I think it's fair. I mean, it's been 15 years, but I think it's fair to say that we were pissed off at Ron Artest. Uh, we're hoping that Ben Wallace would break free and get to him. Yeah. Uh, and then not really in disbelief that he was laying on the scoring table, just thinking it was like a, a, a dick move. Um, but, we you could vividly see the uh the beer come because it, it was like a it, it was an open top plastic beer cup right and so by the time it came to hit Ron Artest it basically was the cup hitting him and then maybe a little some splash, splash yeah. right there wasn't a lot left in the beer because um what we saw from way up in the upper bowl was this arc this golden arc of beer leaving yeah. leaving that. You, so you cup. saw it happen in it. I saw it in real time. Yeah. Saw it happen. Because you're looking in that direction. Because and keep in mind, Ben Wallace's brother is up there. Yeah. Like right in the same section. And he ends up coming over and grabbing our test and getting into it yeah. with him. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so it, it was surreal. It, it was like over in a flash though. Right. Yeah. Um, the, was it was it it's the, so I was watching it live it seemed like forever and it, maybe maybe I'm maybe it's because it happened it happened in stages but it's like like there's the altercation on the floor yeah and then I think there's a definitely different stage of our test laying on the scorers table and um, Ben Wallace being restrained yep um, and then when the beer cup came everything got fast. That's what that's yeah. what was fast to me from because like honestly up to that point it's all part of the game like right. it's it, is it a normal thing that happens no but not a historically unprecedented thing until yeah. he goes up in the stands yeah I guess it, and it it's unprecedented in 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 basketball probably right but I mean like I. Uh, you know, um, I I think I sent you the um, the New York Rangers Boston Bruins uh, 
uh, video after that, right? That yeah. happened in the seventies. Right. True. True. They got ticked off at the fans and went up and uh, went up there. And then there's the um, Ty Domi when he was in Toronto uh, hockey for people that don't know. Um, uh, there was fans harassing him, yeah. and the fans actually dislodged the glass and they fell into the penalty box. And then and and then Domi reacted right. how you would expect like yeah. a, a caged animal to yeah. react if something fell into its cage. Right. Um, so like, I guess it, maybe that's what I was getting at with the hockey stuff is like it, it's crazy, but to me, it's not something I guess to, um, to feel like it's not possible of happening. Like, like there's always that threat. You're, you're in, um, a situation where, you know, it's not gladiators. It's not like they're fighting to the death. But testosterone's pumping, and you can make bad decisions. And you're talking about, um, you know, twenty thousand people. That um, uh, can we be generous and say sixty percent of them are heavily intoxicated? <laughs> it's certainly in the expensive seats. Yeah, I would. I would say that probably. I mean, the guy threw a twelve fifteen dollar beer. <laughs> right. Like, That's just irresponsible. I'm not going to be the one. That, I might be ticked off, but my first thought is not going to be to chuck fifteen dollars at a yeah. person. Yeah, I'm going to drink that. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I don't know where I'm going with this. I I I guess I'm trying to come up with a reason for my nonchalant attitude towards yeah. it. Yeah. Maybe it is because I lived it. It's also probably because um. So my my cousin was there that night. I didn't know my cousin before that night. You didn't know your cousin before so, that night. So my you didn't dad, know your cousin was there, or you just didn't know your cousin. I didn't know my cousin. Oh, okay. So my um, he's on my dad's side of the family. Um, my my dad and my uncle, uh, up until that point, hadn't been communicating for probably. You didn't grow up like, together. Uh, twenty or fifteen, twenty years. Okay. Uh, so yeah. Um, I didn't grow up with him, but he's younger than me. And I didn't, I had a little bit of memory of his, um, of his older brothers, but he was too young for me to even know. Like I didn't know his name. I didn't know he existed. So then how did you know he was at, this is after the fact. Learned it after because, um, so all this crap happened. It took way too long to, um, to get home that night. Yeah, um, and that's because just chaos and and not knowing. Everyone how to... was fired up. Everyone felt like they were going to fight Ron Artest. Yeah, and everyone in the building lot. was kind of like, and, "This could be me next." Well, and everyone was just acting like it. It, I, it wasn't a riot, but it was close. Yeah, to what the parking lot was going on, and really, that was the scariest part for me. Was going like on the, the parking lot. The most adrenaline fueled part was being out in that parking lot. You ever been to the palace? Yes, many times. Um. Yeah. So that that parking lot is not good. Like <laughs> right. it, it's one big parking lot. I think yeah. they designed it so that it wouldn't be like parking at some of the downtown locations where it's like there's a ton of different parking options and you have to just kind of be clever about which ones you take advantage of. Yeah. Like being um, built in the suburbs, they just pretty much put concrete for for days. Yeah. Yeah. That and the Silverdome. Silverdome's parking lot was the same thing where it's right. just like one massive parking lot that all radiates out from the the stadium yeah. which is nice in theory but really crappy when you put i mean 20,000 people and we're in Michigan no one's taking mass transit to right. this right. so it's everyone's you know for every 2 to 3 people there's a vehicle right um but people were just like standing on top of cars and yelling and yeah. screaming and fights broke out like yeah. for some reason that they started fighting each other because they were other. so charged up so charged up from they were the willing to to throw and i'm fists. 19 um yeah i wasn't being served right right in, in there yeah and we're me and my friends are stone cold sober right my buddy who's british was fired up because he was just getting <laughs> his like hooliganism on yeah this was the first and i don't know if he's been to any nba games since this was his first ever nba game so this is so like he's <laughs> thinking NBA is awesome this is how this is how basketball goes <laughs> Uh, so he was, he was super fired up. Um, I, maybe my, me- maybe I was fired up too. My memory's tainted because my cousin that I never knew died that night. 
Oh. He, um, he in, was... In sort of relation to the... He was at the game, not in direct relation to the game. Okay. Um, he, he was at the game. He, uh, I guess he ran down on the court and jumped up and touched the nets. And, and he was one of those people that, oh, wow. that, that got Take advantage the of the, uh, of the, the attention being somewhere else to, to be on the court. Yeah. So him and his friend, um, went there. Um, I think he was probably, he was 16 uh-huh. at the time. He, he had just gotten his license. Um, and then they drove home. And um, the palace is in Auburn Hills yep. in the northern suburbs of Detroit. And um, uh, his family and him lived down near Monroe, downriver. Okay. Uh, so it's a pretty substantial drive. Yeah. Like you're looking at an hour, hour and a half yeah. uh, um, commute, depending on traffic. And um, it, it usually the game would be over, I think, around 10 o'clock. Yeah. Um, maybe like nine nine thirty, ten o'clock sure. if it's a uh, um seven o'clock start. And because of the chaos in the parking lot, I'm sure he got out even later. It took us it it took us forty minutes to just leave just leave the parking lot. The parking lot, lot itself. Yeah. Um he drove he he drove all the way uh there um to drop his buddy off, I guess. And then uh from the time that he dropped his buddy off, like driving driving from his buddy's house to his house, he fell asleep. Oh. And he drove off the road into a, a pole and um, oh my died instantly. Like they think like he never woke up. Yeah. Um, which like prompted this um, this like reunion for a couple of years to like, I guess uh, like, revitalization of my dad's relationship with uh with his brother yeah and um just like I, I, these these opportunities to connect and be with uh, uh with with the family um so really i think of i when i think of that event i immediately start thinking about that wow you know what i mean because yeah. it's, it's kind of fused for me in yeah. the experience so like the actual melee mm-hmm. was, or they call it the malice. The malice the, at the, the, the actual malice yeah. of uh, of the night um, is kind of a footnote in the story. To yeah, me. well, I did. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's that's so weird. You know, uh, just a, a random connected experience that just it feels almost dreamlike right oh absolutely like it doesn't feel like it it's actually happening yeah, yeah. and you, you know what the the only time i've experienced something like that was in 1999 during the riots in east lansing that i was a part of and and mm-hmm. and participated in from a that was your couch a similarly uh bystandery uh Circumstance, yeah. Guys, yeah. where are you taking my couch? <laughs> Guys, <laughs> I just bought that DeLorean, <laughs> and you flipped it over and set it on fire. Um, no, they didn't, it, they didn't flip a DeLorean, did yeah, they? Yeah, they did. Oh man, yeah, that was like one of the that was one of the vivid memories of. of Why mine. would you do yeah. pick a different car? You could pick a find non- a tempo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it it, it was it was. Um, you know, for for those of you who don't know, um, Michigan State basketball team was in the Final Four in um, spring of 1999. They lost to Duke, and the people back home in East Lansing were so enraged and um, angry about this for some reason that they poured out into the streets of East Lansing and were setting things on fire, breaking, you know, uh, shop windows and, you know, jumping on cars, uh, to the point where many, many police officers from surrounding communities came with riot gear and started shooting tear gas and, um, marching through the streets. And I remember like 
you know, this is kind of late at night, right? This is like after midnight and stuff. And we heard the commotion, went out of our apartment, um, and went toward Grand River where all of this was occurring. Just kind of like, what the heck is going on here? You know? Um, and I remember, I remember it through a hazy, like sense of it happening. Mm Mm-hmm. And maybe that's just the tear gas, but it definitely felt like a dream um, as it was happening. I, I think back to that event and walking around, catching a little whiff of the tear gas, running a block in the other direction until we, you know, could breathe again. Um, my buddy, who had who's a doctor um, at the time, was studying to be a doctor, helping a girl who had asthma. The tear gas, you know, got to her and she couldn't breathe. Oh, man. So my buddy jumps onto a fire truck, grabs the first aid kit from there, puts together the oxygen mask and puts it on her. Um, All of this feels, I remember it like I remember dreams. Very pieced together information that I couldn't tell you like from start to finish what happened. It was, it's like a dream where you remember this aspect and you remember this aspect. Does that kind of feel like what the experience was for you? The way that you described when you started going through about what happened on the court and in in the arena. Yeah. I was like, man, I don't remember it in that detail. And I was right there. Right. Right. And I had the benefit of watching it from um, television yeah. Where and and replays and they're showing it again and I've hardly watched any replays of it. Yeah. Yeah, we watched you know? we watched it quite a bit. So when this happened, uh you know, uh we we got married in July of 2004. This happened, you know, we had just gotten married and you know, uh leading up to our wedding, the Pistons won the championship. They weren't expected to. It was really, you know, it was really fun and everything and we get married and you know, we're in our first home together and you know, we're watching Pistons again. And were you this really? Happens. You were really into the Pistons at that point. Oh yeah, we yeah, were, man. Yeah. We we definitely were. Um, was this before? I'm sorry. Um, I was I was in East Lansing when Michigan State lost in the Final Four to uh, North Carolina. Was that like 2004? That 2005? Was it? I'm trying to get my timeline. I straight. think that one was 2008. That was 2008 when it was in Detroit. Um, it might have been in Detroit. Yeah, I think that was two thousand. I think they've played them a couple times, haven't they? Yeah, there was. One... Maybe it was in the Sweet Sixteen when this year when I was uh, th- that I was thinking somewhere in there. It was while I was in undergrad, and two thousand eight would have been. I mean, it could have been. Um, uh, and it could have been. It would be my last year, but um, yeah. Um, I that was the first time I experienced tear gas. Yeah. <laughs> not not as cool as it sounds. No, no. Although it does clear your sinuses really well, and then and then clog them at the same time. Oh, I didn't I'm, feel that. I I just I just remember <laughs> wanting to to not breathe, breathe. anymore. <laughs> okay, I won't try it again. It, it it was it was so slight that I thought, hey, this isn't that bad. What are people complaining about? It's like I'm glad it. It's like going to an outdoor hockey game. Uh, I'm glad I did it once. <laughs> but I really don't have any ambition to ever do it to again. To ever do it again. Yeah. Wow. Although, if my sons want to go see an outdoor hockey game, I'm sure I Or will. get tear gassed. Or get tear gassed. Hey, they might as well be there with dad. That's if, right. If they're going to do either You can of those guide things. them through. I can guide them through that process. I can say... You want as many gloves, like mittens are warmer than finger gloves. Yeah. You need, you need mittens, um, hand warmers and toe warmers, put them on the last for four hours. They will help you out a lot. Keep nice. your, keep your hands in, in your toes warm. You will be warm. Um, practice holding your breath boys. Yeah. Uh, when, when the mounted police start riding in, in formation, right. Turn around and walk out the back way. Go away from the the sound of hooves. Right. I remember tear gas getting hit, turning, and then um, uh, having my feet lift off the ground. And I traveled about 15, 20 feet. 
before my feet touched the ground again yeah. in full stride running. Oh, wow. Because this wave of people moved so quickly. And I'm not a small person. Right. It just lifted me up, and I rode the wave of people. Oh, my um, gosh. 15, 20 feet yeah. before um, I was dropped and then, like, was able to hit the ground literally running. Yeah. And, um, I, I mean, I'm just so fortunate that I didn't end up on the other side of that, which I think would be trampled. Yeah. Right. I know people did get trampled from that. Oh, for sure. I always wondered like, how is that effective crowd control when, (laughs) when you're dispersing people, but like people got injured yeah, like by, by doing that and all that, all that people were doing, like where I was at, where they were standing in the street and they were, they were chanting. There was no fires around yeah. where I was at. It was just gathering in right. the street. Yeah. Now I know, like you're not allowed to just go stand in the intersection. I what's the intersection there where the where the hamster cage looking oh, parking structure? Oh, like Grand is? River and Ab, not Abbott. Um, uh, like Mac M A C. Yeah. Yeah. Like right around the hotel there. The, yeah. 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 And yeah. Um, yeah, that's where we were at. I just I didn't understand why tear gas was appropriate for that yeah well it may be precedent from the i think we year we i was were, there we were paying for 99 oh for sure that's what that's what it was you're welcome thank you you got that experience because of me you're thank you yeah thanks thanks dad <laughs> yeah uh it, i mean i mean um you know we were just married we were watching it on tv live as it happened um carol was crying she was like oh because the you definitely didn't see this, but after they cut to the people back in the studio, they're like, this is horrible. The people of Detroit are trash. This is this is nonsense. Oh, and really? Yeah, yeah. It was, and she, and you know, she being from the area as well, was like, was like, no, no, like, why are they doing this? Why are they doing this? And it was just like, it was so surreal. But we had the benefit of hearing the commentary, watching the replay over and over, because like I couldn't go to sleep that night. I I was charged up just watching you were charged it. Up. And you I would have been one of the ones on top of cars oh, fighting man. each other oh, in the parking man. lot be rip my shirt off and you and, were of age yeah that's so true you would have been in 20... the 60 percent for yeah. sure <laughs> <laughs> yes not not in the not in the rich people who are down like in the expensive seats but in the um, next episode let's talk about the instances where you ripped your shirt off and wanted to fight Ooh, okay i have one of those stories <laughs> but the, but only one uh, well that's good yeah. i would hope that it, you wouldn't have more than one yeah Otherwise, just just one's all it takes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. um but uh, yeah, what a what a interesting experience for an event that pretty much everyone has heard of, right? If you were yeah. if you were an adult um, during that time and you follow sports at all, you follow news at all, you would have heard of this. And um, for you to have been there, I think is a is a really interesting aspect of. Um, of that event to know that I know someone who was there and to kind of hear what it was like for you to experience that. Mm-hmm. So I don't really Yeah. Am I you supposed to... to make you like something well, about I, this? You know, I, I think um, it was really a, an excuse to hear you talk about that. Um, but uh, I think you've effectively made me like your experience at this event and given me a different aspect of it because like from my perspective everybody in that arena was crowding down toward the players ready to throw hands that's the way that it was painted wasn't it it really was i just i i never felt like i was an active participant in it i yeah. felt like i was a spectator. I, w- I was a spectator which um i paid money to, to be. be a spectator yeah right um but yeah well you know you're you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's it's something that is so vividly memorable to me. Um and to find out that you were there, I think it just kind of blew my mind that like, whoa, how did you never bring this up in any conversation at all? Yeah, I'm surprised by your wife's reaction to it. Like honestly, oh, like, yeah. like like that's it's pretty it's that's like the opposite of what mine was. Like, I didn't take it personally. I didn't th- think it was like a condemnation on, on the city. Yeah. Well, um, maybe, and maybe that was informed by the, the commentary, um, the commentary right? and, and sports center and, and the, the crapping on Detroit as a whole for the actions of 
very few, right? It also makes me think about how uh, how how immature the like the news cycle was at that point. Yeah, like, like that it wasn't the animal that it is today. Right. To where like even if I went to that in 2019 and I left, I would be like inundated with like that's that's pre Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Two years before Twitter. Um. That's. It, it i'm not getting that was pre-gift culture like <laughs> you know what i mean like it's it it's uh yeah it's not like i would get on my feeds and like yeah. get inundated by it i experienced it at the event and i don't remember hearing commentary on it too right. much afterwards i heard a little bit about it and yeah. was like wow they're talking about i was there yeah like, that's that's my imagine if everyone had cell phones was get and was getting like footage of every angle of this whole thing no one texted me to see if i was all right <laughs> Like not not anyone. No one was like like bro, you okay, dude? Did you have to throw hands? Like <laughs> there was there was none of that. It's just silence. Yeah, I don't know if that was just the times or whether like people don't care about me. <laughs> uh, we can explore that in the next episode. My dad was watching it and never yeah. once texted me. No, what because he didn't know how to text in two thousand four. Yeah. <laughs> um, but. Dang. dang dang well thank you for sharing that because yeah. it's 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 uh so interesting to me and you know my reflection on on the on the riot situation that i experienced is such a a a weird um questioning like what did i actually see and what am i remembering from the news and what it, it just it just feels so much like a dream and i and i am so happy to hear that that was also your experience in a weird way because that helps validate my own experience yeah well you're welcome <laughs> <laughs>